it could have ended badly. It could have been that badly. So, this happened to me back in the year 2011. So, the exact dialogue may have skipped my memory a bit. But the situation is something I'll never forget. Also, during that time, AIM and AOL sessions were still pretty active during this time. So, I used them. Additionally, the same happened with video chatting. I think the name was Tiny Chat. I'm not sure, but this is important for later. I'm writing these lines during the initial days of the month of July in the year 2022, and I am a female. So, I was on an online dating website, and naturally I will not say which one because I will be tracked mercilessly in the comments. <laughs> lol and I was talking to this guy I was 31 at the time and he was 28 we talked for about 6 weeks before I gave him my number and we took it offline to calling and texting for another couple of weeks 2 months after our initial chat we were texting and he told me that he was out having a few beers at a bar near my house he asked what I was doing and he asked if I wanted to come out but I had a very long day at work and naturally I did not feel like going to a bar. Also, I'm not a big drinker. Instead, I invited him over to my place. Uh, I know, I know, I know, bad decision. After he finished at the bar and he accepted, I figured it would be okay since I do keep firearms for protection and I know how to defend myself if needed. Also, I had a webcam. I took a shower so I wouldn't smell like a water buffalo on a hot day. The air went out of work. I put on some makeup and I got dressed to wait. He then called and said he was outside my house. I clicked record on my computer's webcam program and I turned off my monitor and I went to let him in. So it's around 10 p.m. and he comes in and we go back to my bedroom because my living room was being remodeled. We are sitting on the bed chatting for about an hour talking about everything under the sun. The conversation flowed. He was very handsome and so easy to be comfortable with. We got on the subject of firearms and I showed him mine. About 15 minutes later he asks for some water so I go to the kitchen to get him a bottle. When I come back he said he got a phone call and he had to leave. After he left I look on my nightstand where I put the firearm down after showing him and I noticed that it was gone. I look everywhere for it thinking I had put it down somewhere else. Nope, not there. I then played back the recording from my webcam program and sure enough it shows him grabbing it and putting it in his hoodie. I was naturally terrified at that point. He knew where I lived, he had my firearm and he left his phone on my bed. Right then his phone rings and I answer it. Come to find out, he is actually married and his wife was calling him wondering where he was. I told her everything, including the fact that he stole my firearm and that I had video evidence and was calling the police on him. Next thing I know, he's banging on my door, my firearm in his hand, asking me for his phone. The conversation went like this. 
Hey, I need my phone. Give me my phone. I am naturally not opening the door. But I'm yelling through the window. And I say this to him. Take the clip out of my firearm. Empty the chamber. Throw the clip into the bushes. The one in the chamber across the road and put it on the ground. No, I don't think so. Give me my phone in this moment. I'm on the phone with your wife at the moment and I have your own video stealing from me. After that, I put his wife on speaker and naturally, she immediately begins to yell a whole bunch of expletives and other swear words. He has a naturally shocked Pikachu face. He runs and gets in his car and then comes back. Okay, okay, hey, I threw your gun in the ditch. At this point, I make him empty his pockets, take his pants off, take his hoodie off and show me that he doesn't have my firearm on him. All the while, his wife is on the phone. I go outside and I get in his car, in the driver's seat and I tell him to take me to where he threw my firearm. He proceeds to tell me that I don't know how hard it is for him being a felon, not being allowed to own a firearm ever because of a mistake he made. The mistake? Domestic violence involving a firearm. We get up the road and he tells me the firearm is there in the ditch. Then I realize the situation I'm in. I can get out of the car and go get it, leaving him to do whatever he, to, whatever he wanted to me if he chose. He was 6.4 and 225 pounds and I was at the time 5.3 and 135 pounds. Or I could make him go get it, taking a chance of him seriously hurting me. It took me a while to decide. I took that chance since I was on his phone with his wife and my phone with 911. By the way, for the non-Americans watching this, he was 1.93 meters and 102.058 kilograms, while I, the lady, the female in the story, was 61.235 kilograms and 1.61 meters. He then retrieves my firearm, he brings it back to the car, and I drive back to my house, and I wait for the police. I get out of the car, and he gets in the driver's seat. I'm still on the phone with the police. I walk around the back of his car to get his license plate number, and he just puts his car in reverse. He hits me, and he takes off. They found him later that evening. He still had the clip and the one in the chamber in his pocket. So now he's enjoying time in prison. So glad I never have to meet this person again. <laughs>